Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about something that sounds really complicated. And depending on how much detail we talk about this topic, it kind of could be, but fortunately for you, it never will be that complicated on either the SAT or ACT math sections. That topic is linear regression. So let's take a look. Okay, linear regression. So what does that mean? Well, if we break down the two words, linear is very familiar, it just sounds a lot like a linear equation. And we know what linear is, linear is just a straight line. So what about regression? Well, regression means basically to come back to or to go down to. And so together, what linear regression means is coming back to a line or to make a line. And so just to make a quick sketch to show you what I mean, let's say we have a little graph and we've got some points and they kind of go like this. And all linear regression is asking for you to do is draw a line between those points. So linear regression is the line of best fit between some points that hopefully have some sort of trend. So whether there is a trend or not, or how strong that trend is, is a topic for AP statistics. And we never get that deep into stats in either the SAT or ACT. So you don't need to worry about it too much. There may have been one question once a long time ago that sort of involved linear regression items, but, but we're really not going to dive that deeply into linear regression. As much as I want to, I love statistics, by the way. Huge, gigantic plug right now to take a stats class in high school because one of those things that's super useful for your entire life, take a statistics class. But this is statistics, but don't be too afraid because it's really not too bad. So what are we going to be doing today? Drawing lines between dots. That's basically all we're doing. And so what I've done here is made a slightly nicer plot of, of lines here for you to take a look at. And I just want to define one item really quickly, which is residuals. So it's unlikely but possible that you'll see the term residuals on a tough math question about linear equations. And all a residual is here, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example with this, this line graph here. So, you know, concurrent to that lesson is the lesson of how to draw this line. So we as humans are really good at seeing patterns and things. It's something we are hardwired to do. And it's pretty straightforward to just sort of eyeball this and see what kind of line would fit in there. And one way to really easily do it is just basically pick the last dot and the first dot and just connect them. And usually for these tests, that'll be pretty close to the best line you can draw. And so oh, let's just go a little bit above them. And so let's do that. And the topic of residuals comes in here as we look at this line. So there are, as you can see, there are literally an infinite number of lines that I can draw between these points. And every time I draw a different line, it's going to be further or closer to the line, the, the points rather, given in the plot. And the residuals, well, what that means is we take the distance from the line to each point. And in this one here, it's really dead on. This one's really dead on. A little bit of distance there, a little bit of distance there, and distance there, and distance there. And we take that difference and we square it so that it's not negative anymore. We add all those together and square root that. So that gives us the sum of how far away our line is from the points given. So obviously, as, re as the residual value goes down, the accuracy of our line to the points given goes up. And so if they ever ask you about the residuals, it's just the total distance of the line from the points given. And clearly this is a pretty good line here because there's not a ton of residuals. And basically what I did is I it wasn't really sure what the best line would be because I don't have you know access to Excel to like give me a nice uh, exact linear regression when I'm doing these tests. So basically what I do is I just find the first dot, find the last dot and connect them and see what kind of line I've got. And so if we look at this, I don't know, that looks a lot like 24 right there. So that line is going to be y equals something negative x plus 24. Looks like from 0 to 10, I'm going down about 20. And so that would be about negative 1 half x. I mean, probably a little bit more or less. But you get the point. You don't need to be that specific uh, on the test because the answers are always going to be super clear, which is correct, which is not. OK, so really not a ton of in-depth definition learning today. And I think that's really the best way to look at doing linear regressions on these tests. If you get to college and take a stats course, there's going to be a ton of detail there. But um, for most part, when you're doing these on these tests, it's just the less you think about it, the better. So let's take a look at some example problems, see what you can do. 
Okay, let's take a look at this first one, looking to the end as usual. If a student studied for six hours, what is the predicted exam score? So high school teacher records the number of hours students spend studying an exam X and their respective scores for exam Y. Do you notice there's a linear relationship between the hours studied and the exam scores? The equation of best fitting lines was gonna be the linear regression value is Y equals five X plus 40, where Y is the exam score and X is the number of hours studied. If students studied for six hours, what's the score? And we can see pretty clearly here, if we put that six, which is the X value into the X right there, it's five times six plus 40, and 30 plus 40 is 70. And so that's gonna give us our score of 70. And then just while we're here, taking a look at this line, the important thing to notice is that the, there is a, a realm of possibility for linear regression lines. And this is a really good illustration because here we're saying if we studied for zero hours, we'd probably get a 40, which might make sense. But then again, if we studied for 10 hours, we would get a 90, then if we study for 20 hours, we would get 140 on the test, which is impossible. So what this is saying, is there's an only a specific set where this line actually makes sense. There's a point to which if you put in an X value, it's no longer gonna be within the realm of possibility. And that's fine because the point of these linear regressions we're doing is to give some sort of estimate uh, and let us to help us to predict an outcome based on a relationship between two variables. Okay, moving on to our next question here, see what you can do with this one. Okay, the question says, the chart above plots the relationship between weight kilogram and the length in centimeters for a group of crocodiles. So I have little baby crocodiles probably into big, big older crocodiles. Which of the following equations most closely relates the weight X with the length Y? And so what I'll probably do here is just try to connect the, basically the first one because it's nice and grouped here. The first one with the last one, and it'll look kind of like that. Uh, and since I'm getting trying to find a intercept, I actually will start with the last one and kind of draw through the first one. And that looks pretty good. Maybe it'd be a little higher just because there's all these guys up here. So we want to draw the best line. So maybe you want like this. But again, it's not really going to matter on these tests. You're always going to be pretty close with whatever good, half good line you draw. Referring back to my video on tricky linear equations, it's always important to look to the axes to see if they're trying to fool you. In this case, I was not. We start with zero on both the axes. And so we want to figure out whereabouts, you know, here or here that line starts. And they're asking whether that line starts at 20 or 60. And I'm going to say that starts way closer to 60 because 20 would be way down there and that doesn't make sense. So we'll get rid of the 20s. And now we've got to decide whether my slope is 60 or 2, which doesn't seem too bad. Like we start here at like zero would be apparently 60. And then all the way out here at 100, we're at 200. And so that's definitely not the slope of 60. Because then we'd be going up one and basically be all the way over there, all the way up that high. So we're going to say that the slope is two. So really not that bad, right? Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully you can see that linear regression, although sounding kind of complicated, really isn't that bad when it's presented to you as it is on the ACT and SAT math sections. Remember, just draw a line between the first and last dot and see what it looks like. Don't think too much. Anyway, if you found this material useful, we hope that you will like and share the video and subscribe to Quiet Education. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.